Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. On this episode, we are going to cover my flight attendant journey in applying to nine different airlines, and then some of them multiple times. Questions I got asked during these interviews, and the things, the questions that I will never forget, how I answered them, and further resources to help you succeed on your cabin crew journey. Hello, hello, I'm Ruth and I help flight attendant aspirants simplify the complicated cabin crew interviews. I make weekly videos on flight attendant interview tips and if you are a new graduate searching that topic right now or you're currently employed and wondering how to shift your career into a flight attendant or cabin crew industry, you are in the right place. So feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel or podcast if you're listening over the Fly Podcast or follow us if you're watching over at our Facebook page to get weekly tips about this topic. How are you fam? It's been a minute since I have updated. I accidentally cracked my tooth and I can't film videos for almost like two months and now I have temporary dentures. That's why you would hear me. I might have a lisp or I talk funny sometimes with letter S and all of that. <laughs> I'm still adjusting to my temporary dentures and until I could get a an implant and then we're going to be all a-okay once again. Anyways, it's been a long time and I missed filming for you guys. But the important thing now is that we are back and running once again. I didn't leave you guys, okay? <laughs> if you want to download the copy of my ebook, The 10 Cabin Crew Questions and Sample Answers, where I listed the 10 cabin crew interview questions and sample answers and an explanation, of how to answer, how to formulate your own unique answers. Get it now. It's available as my freebie at misscakeris.com. I will be putting it on the description box so you could check it out. Maybe on the cards up here too. All right. So let's get on to the video. All right. So since 2016, I was still a nursing student. I started applying for Qatar Airways. That is the first time I applied for any airline in my life. And funny thing, <laughs> I passed the first day because there's usually three days when you're applying for Qatar Airways. And I got invited for the second day. And when I got invited for the second day, I went to the first stage and then poof, that's when I failed. But the question I got on the first day is, tell me about yourself. And the second day, uh, we, we were doing group activities. There is a group dynamics. And then there is like a lot of activities, different ones that they're doing. And then they gonna, they're going to give you an instruction. And I think the reason I got eliminated is that I didn't follow the instruction. Because the recruiter said during the a group activity, don't look at us. Don't look at the recruiters don't mind us at all just focus on your activity but me being an ocd and paranoid i kept looking at the recruiters so you know i can't focus so i didn't follow that instruction i'm automatically eliminated i do have a video on how to answer tell me about yourself and I'm going to put it here on the description box. Also a video about the second day, the group dynamics about Qatar Airways. It will be listed on the description box or on the cards up here. Check it out after you watch this video. So after this first time encounter in applying for the flight attendant position for Qatar Airways, I went through the years and up, I applied like two to four times from 2009 to 2013 and I really can't fathom why I can't get the job or why can't I get through the last stage. It has become my obsession at this time. So believe me when I tell you this obsession is real and this is where I learned to figure out how to pass different stages of the three-day process because they usually go to Cebu, my hometown, every month, twice a month and it's one of their favorite places to recruit cabin crew. So the funny thing is, during the first day, they really ask you either of two things. Throughout this experience, I kept applying of them. 
from the, to them. They just keep asking me the same question over and over again. Can you imagine? I already mastered this question. And the question is, tell me about yourself. Did you apply with us before and what happened? That's it. That's all the question you're going to get. So after two hours of waiting in line, you will have exactly two minutes to answer questions for the recruiter on the first day. So I also have a playlist on the QR application process. I'm going to put it in the description or on the cards up here if you're curious about the Qatar Airways processes. So in 2009, I graduated. Thank God. <laughs> I graduated. I did two years in a call center. And then I realized call center is not for me. So I started applying for local airlines because I can't wait for the next Qatar Airways uh, uh, hiring again because at that time, they suddenly stopped hiring. All right. So I started applying for Cebu Pacific. And all they asked me during the assessment is that smile your biggest smile. So I did like this. My gummy smile. <laughs> I didn't get in. The next airline that I applied for is Philippine Airlines, the flag carrier of my country. So I did the initial interview, the group interview, and I was waiting for the panel interview. This is spaced out in a span of months. Okay, so I was still working for the call center. It's not like Qatar Airways that is day one, day two, day three. This they will just say they will call you. And you don't know. It may take two weeks, six months, seven months, eight months. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That was wrong. I mean, that is a long wait. So, by the time that I got into the panel interview, they are already asking me to go to PAL. Or uh, the flight will be provided by them from Cebu City to Manila. So, for you to take the interview and then they will fly you back. So, that's really nice of them. I didn't know that at the time. So, I was stressed and worried about how much is the plane ticket, where am I going to stay in Manila, and things like that. So, it was really stressful at the time. And at the same time, while waiting, I started applying to another airline as well. And this is Airfield Express, where I got hired. Uh, spoiler alert, but I'm going to tell you the question later on in the video. The next airline that I kept on applying for is Air Asia. So they are the newest airline there is. They are having the hair down. It's not up in a bun. You know, they're like the Virgin Airlines uh, counterpart uh, in Asia. So they're new. They're fun, enthusiastic. So when I was applying to this airline, they actually asked me to sing one in Filipino and one in English to dance. <laughs> And to do an English exam, which is really, really hard to pass. It's like 200 item English test. So that's my experience with Air Asia. I stopped by the time that we had to do a group presentation. Our group didn't do well. So everybody in our group didn't get in. The next airline during this timeline that I was applying for is Saudi. And they are very particular. You really have to have the right BMI, the right weight for your height. And then you have to do a catwalk during their interview with the recruiters, the ones from Saudi. So they would ask you to do a catwalk, sachet here, there, front, back. It was so silly, guys. <laughs> hey, have you checked out my How to Walk for Your Cabin Crew Airline interview? It's a funny video. I didn't talk there. It's just all uh, making fun of these things. But yeah, check it out. It's one of the highest viewed videos here in my channel. All right, if you have reached this part of the video and we have so far we have covered five airlines that I have applied for, stick until the end where I will share with you the final interview questions I got asked when they actually hired me for PAL Express, Qatar Airways, and Oman Air. All right, if my content has been helpful to your cabin crew journey, please make sure to let me know by giving this video a like. Or leaving a review if you are listening over the podcast or our Facebook page. That really helps me out a lot and it enables me to make more free videos on this channel. So back to the business. <laughs> Other, you know, um, what do you call this honorable mention of the airlines that I have applied for during my time was Emirates Spa Assistant. Okay, because they weren't hiring for cabin crew. 
Yes, you're welcome. So they're hiring for the Emirates cabin crew assistant. There is also Flynas. Flynas is a low-cost airline in Dubai. They are the counterpart of Emirates as well. I have applied for Oman Air and also I kept on applying for Qatar Airways. So here we go. For Air Fuel Express, my final interview question was something that shocked me because I wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> there was, of course, an initial interview. There was an online exam. And then the final interview is with the head of Airfield Express, so Sir Jojit at that time. Hi, Sir Jojit, if you're watching this. He asked me, what is your stand in politics? So instead of me going to Manila for the final interview, it was him who went to Cebu to interview candidates. And that is where he asked me the question, what is your stand in politics? I answered by saying I try to keep my politics and religion talk at home. I don't try to bring it to the workplace because I want to be more efficient and productive in the work. And I do respect other people having their own opinions on this matter. And it's all good and well. We are all humans. We are entitled to our opinion. It doesn't, it shouldn't be a hindrance to how we work and how we perceive each other. So I try to avoid talking about this topic whenever it is brought up in a professional workplace setting. So that's how I answered it. I still remember now. <laughs> because that's like my favorite question of all that I have ever encountered because it like came out of the blue. I was I was practicing these different questions and how to answer them. Um, thankfully, there is a question that I've practiced that is a little bit same to this question. So I just applied it to this one. So and then I made sure that I stopped and I stopped by the end because I didn't want to add any more to it <laughs> because that way I will look like I'm rambling already I didn't know what I'm talking about so yeah and I just stopped and smiled <laughs> and did eye contact that's it <laughs> thankfully I got in and I was working with Airfield Express later on acquired by PAL became PAL Express for three years it was a good times guys it's a good time anyways while I was still working for Airfield Express I was also applying for Qatar Airways fun fact I got hired for Qatar Airways and there was just a little bit of glitch by the end but I went through the whole process and finally my 19 year old self is happy <laughs> because I finished the three days I went through the three days I guess that's that's how it started my obsession in applying for the flight attendant position for Qatar Airways I just wanted to complete it okay my personality is i can't start something and not end it i have to finish it so if, for example i watch a movie and i'm already tired and the story is like i'm listening to the story but i'm already tired i'm not gonna sleep until i finish the story i might fast forward it a bit read the captions or as long as it's finished so this one, this obsession lasted from when I was 19 years old up until I was 27. 27 was the age that I was hired for Qatar Airways. So the question that I had for the final interview for Qatar Airways is, it's a behavioral type of question. It's an open-ended question that you have to explain things. So it's more like a conversation, really. So they asked me, what is your biggest obstacle? that you have overcome in your life so far? So that was the question. <laughs> so here I adopted my technique, which I've been teaching my students. I've been teaching in the blogs. I've been teaching in the vlogs, been teaching in Instagram and Facebook as well. And all my online courses and all my coaching sessions, I've been teaching you how to answer behavioral questions like this or situational questions like this. So tune in or watch uh, watch my other videos wherein I talk about the STAR method. That is how I was able to answer this question. And of course, always smiling and doing eye contact while I am doing it. So I think, do I remember my answer? Oh, when you're doing the STAR method, you have to explain the situation, uh, explain the task. Welcome. Doing the task that you need to be done and the actions that you have taken and the results. So that's the STAR method. So I said something like uh, the biggest obstacle that I have ever overcome in my life is dealing with uh, losing my mom. 
I think that's what I said. And then um, I have to raise myself. That's the task. And the actions that I took is that I I started reading self help books. I started looking for other mom pig- figures in my life, and then. Hopefully right now, I think it has resulted very well because I have come so far in my life right now and I'm here standing in front of you trying to go for a dream that I have always dreamed of and reaching for the stars. So having a parent not present when you are there, it really impacts you in a lot of ways. But I have realized that I'm still blessed in many other ways, like my other relatives are there, I'm always been provided for, and life is good in the end. It's all about how you make your life to be. So something like that's my answer, <laughs> So that's my, my Qatar Airways uh, question. And now finally, what happened is that Qatar Airways started to stop hiring. So everybody who has been hired will have to be rejected. Because they have a problem with the airline, uh, with the airplanes, having a defect, things like that. So they had an obverse supply of cabin crew that they have projected for that time that they're hiring us. So now they have to stop hiring us. <laughs> I was so sad. So what I did is my friend said, oh, you apply here in Oman Air. I'm already here. I got hired. So we'll be together. So I applied there. And good enough, I was still fresh from my cabin crew interview experience with Qatar Airways I was able to apply all the skills and the knowledge and the research that I did for that interview and got the job for Oman Air as well so the final uh, question that they asked us I remember it was a one-day processing so they're doing it like really fast so they're doing it by batch we have one whole batch they're like 12 of us in one room we'll have one question that's the final interview the question is uh, will be given to us and we will just have to answer one by one by one and then they will let us know who passed and who didn't and then bye bye now that's the end <laughs> this is after the whole day of uh, recruitment process right there's an initial interview group interview and then this is the final one the final question for all of us was very simple and this is what i've been up i've been practicing for since airfield days <laughs> and this was asked for us the question was why should we hire you so i started answering it of course perfectly with flying colors and i was able to get the job with um oman air and since oman air i was flying with them for three good years until i met my husband and started a family and i resigned (laughs) and now i'm here coaching flight attendant aspirants like myself to hopefully not struggle so much as I did, right? On my interviews. Let me know in the comments down below. Please share your most memorable question that you got when you were applying for the cabin crew position. And let's figure out the best way to answer it. I'll be waiting for your comments down below. Next Monday, I will be doing an interview tutorial for the question, how have you developed during the pandemic, both personally and professionally? So that theme of our next videos will be all about pandemic related questions. And that will be what we are going to be practicing because the world is opening up right now. They might throw in some of these questions at you. So if you want to check out the video once it's live, make sure you have been subscribed already on this channel, on this podcast, on this Facebook page, wherever you are watching so that you get alerted once that video is live. If you are serious about starting your own flight attendant journey, I would recommend for you to have someone to do mock interviews with you. Someone with knowledge on how the process is going through a cabin crew position recruitment and then at least how to screen candidates somebody who is working in hr somebody who's hiring people in their daily life because when you're applying for an open day or cabin crew recruitment day what i wish i had before when i was still struggling is i wish i had a lot of practice because the only practice i had is on the moment itself already there is no second take it's that's it i have no one to practice with 
It seems like when you go to the interview, the first try is really you apply all your research, all your studying on how to answer these questions. And understandably, it's the first time that you will apply your research, right? So it would take some time to perfect your delivery, your posture, your creation of answer in your head, the whole process, how to smile, how to pause, how to breathe during your interview, and how to deal with the nerves, so for me, I can read all the blogs, I can watch all the YouTube videos on how to answer the question, but really there is no space where I can make mistakes and improve. The actual interview became my training and that was a very long process that took me to get it right. It took a lot of willpower to not give up. A lot of energy to keep going at it. A lot of resources, actually. A lot of money was spent. Ay, nako. It is a very, very long process. And it took me overall eight years, eight years to finally get it right and get the dream job that I have, which is become an international flight attendant. Most people have already given up by then. And I say, the more practice you get, the better chances you will get at getting hired as well. So if this is something that you are looking for, looking for, I have recently started accepting clients once again after four long years. <laughs> as you know, before motherhood, I was doing up in-person workshop. Skype one-on-one -on -one video calls and training aspirants for this moment, this interview moment that could change the projection of their life. So if you want to know my availability, you could check out my links. It will be a booking link on the description box. It is also on my Instagram link. You could check it out. It's everywhere. Uh, you could check my availability and you could book me so that you can hire me as your coach. With all that said, check out my playlist of interview questions and sample answers I have created over the years on this channel. And you will see that right on the screen right now. Thank you so much and I will fly with you soon. Bye!